today I got B99 RXT. Just right now, just trying to look for it. Oh, wait, it's right here. I honestly thought it'd be a Pacifica, not a Voyager. Just making sure that, yeah, it's a wheelchair, okay. okay. Looks a little low for one of our wheelchair vans, but yeah, it's my van today. And like, if I get Rattlesnake tomorrow, man, like that'd be something, but hey, it's right now uh, 528. Hey, um, basically just gonna do the pre-trip inspection and and um yeah basically just get the day started yeah the van i got today is surprisingly low compared to the others in the the other wheelchair vans that we have like which already the chryslers are as low to the ground as they already are and stuff like can't count how many times like like, I'm going the speed limit and, like, still scratch under the speed hump, which is annoying and stuff. Of, like, so, you know, if you're behind me and I'm at a speed hump and I'm going way below the speed limit, deal with it. Like, I'm sorry to say it. It's just, honestly, like, I just don't need any drama and everything. All I know is this is our second van that I'm driving where um, there's no middle seat um, in the row where, where, like in the normal Chryslers in the fleet, it would be like this. But yeah, this is another one where it doesn't have like all the bells and whistles. All I know is like, I gotta let the the supervisor over here know about the um, about the low tire. Eh. So that way. She can be ready. Oh my god. <sighs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, all together we'll see how it goes. It was today and tomorrow I'm working from uh, from 6 to 11.30. A good shift and everything. And, and yeah, we'll just see how it goes. But yeah, I gotta get the tire done. And also, um, let him know about the, um, um, oh, not, uh, like, let him know about the tire pressure and also, um, go to the gas station. So, it's a lot today. Okay, y'all just missed the best express run of my life where, you know, it was from the Society Hill community, which, like, I, like, okay, I, I know this isn't fully realistic and everything what I'm about to say, but almost everyone from that community is just really nice and stuff. Let me put the hazards on because I'm over here at Journal Square and traffic is starting to build up. But I said all that to say that, you know, it wasn't bad with coming over here and everything. We started talking about animals, different pets and everything. And, you know, it was just, it was just really nice. So now I got a local run that will take me one stop will come back here to Journal Square. Another will, like, take me all over the place. And we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I can get around one of my co-workers right here. Here. But who who knows? Okay. So I parked the van for now because I had to drop off a passenger at the Marshalls. So, in the meantime, this may sound weird. And I don't care if it's weird. I'm going to Chuck E. Cheese's for a brief second. And the reason why... Is because I know the one in Brooklyn and the one on Staten Island on South Avenue. Um, I know they both got rid of their indoor jungle gyms. So I'm just curious if this Chuck E. Cheese is still have it. Because I heard rumors that they still have theirs and everything. I mean, hopefully it's still maintained a little bit and everything. Because um, the fun station on um, Travis Avenue, for instance, like they still have theirs after all these years, but it is incre it's incredibly dated and run down and everything. And it just looks disgusting. So I just want to see if, if they still have it here. Update. I don't think they have it, which stinks. So, yeah, you know, that's that. Which I had a feeling that they got rid of theirs and everything because like a lot of people, a lot of places are phasing out indoor jungle gyms and everything. Granted, I can't fit in any. Hey, like I haven't been in one in like 
like um almost 20 years now that i think about it because i'm 27 right now and like i wasn't even 10 years old when i got too tall for them and mind you all these people that are shorter than me that are like 10 11 12 or third probably 13 or something like they got to fit in so you know right now i just got the van over there and yeah in the meantime i'm just gonna just use the bathroom somewhere worst case scenario waiting for the bathrooms to be open here and basically make the long story short um basically we both stalls are being used and i know i'm a guy but i hate using urinals i haven't used a urinal in uh, in a long time oh great now i got a passenger too Ugh. i'm sorry all right i'm not gonna say the name on youtube but she could wait like no one's gonna let me pee like seriously what's going on like uh, i guess i'll just drive over to the dunk and if that's closed i'm gonna be frustrated like like seriously what's going on hey because you know it's a quick run on west side avenue for one disabled passenger and everything and then afterwards i could just like get on the move and everything because i got i got about an hour left for my shift but still you know, yeah right now it's 10 01 and yeah it should be a quick it should be a quick line run but mind you i can't take a quick pee anywhere like seriously like this stinks but yeah let me go to duncan okay they had an open bathroom oh thank god like, what annoyed me was the two stalls in the men's room was crowded. Like, I'm sorry, I gotta say this. We men don't need urinals. Like, with all the burritos and everything we eat, the, the all the gas jokes we do, we do not need urinals. Like, just give us all the days and I'll be happy and everything. And yes, I know. And yes, um, I know that there are normally toilets here in the United States, but, but like, you'll understand why I have nothing but bidets in my book, Raymond Waters Imagine, my, my book series, Raymond Waters Imagination. Like, just download them both on Amazon Kindle. Okay, let's, let's, um, continue this and see how it goes. Okay, so normally I wouldn't go past the time, um, with regards to heading back to a lot, but... Basically, I had to time everything just right because I knew at around a certain point I would be able to be here in the Newport area because I dropped off my last passenger over at Acme and like usual, Via wanted her to walk walk 500 miles to get to the destination after she gets dropped off. So I was like, I'll just take you there. You're my last passenger. So, <laughs> so basically, I said all that to say that I'm just taking this opportunity to stretch my legs and frankly see if there's pizza here at Target. Like, I can't, I can't help, I can't help it. Like, it's the, it's the end of the day. Like, no, no lie, this, like, there was a kid that just walked by who just looked so cute. She, she literally looked like um, a, a friend of mine and everything who I just saw yesterday, so I know it's not her and everything. And there's no pizza, darn it! Okay, so, <sighs> well, that's that. Yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, I was ready to just quickly buy a pie and just drive back to the lot and then just eat it in my truck. Because, um, one thing that one of the drivers pointed out yesterday, and I thought I was the only one, just sometimes the vans are disgusting. And it was funny how he was able to bring it out because one of the driver partners and everything, um, he is a father of two teenage boys and everything. Now, if I one thing that I learned as a former teenage boy, we're disgusting. Like, I'm sorry to say it like that, but it's true. So... Yeah, he was he was mentioned about like, you know, how there at times there's like garbage and junk or whatever that's left over in the vans and everything, which is kind of sad and everything. And and you know, 
I remember him saying, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to clean after both teenagers and grown adults, which I kind of agree to a degree and everything. I'm trying to work on things myself and everything, but yeah, so much for that. So, oh, it's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes to get back to the lot, but you know, I'll be back by the next hard cut. Back at the lot and back in my truck. So, um, yeah, the drive back wasn't bad. It took a little bit longer than expected, but, but yeah, no, it is what it is. So, I wanted to briefly explain the title of this video. As you know, yesterday I was able to go go to um, uh, uh, safety, uh, safety, a safety training session or something for Via Jersey City yesterday, where our brand new field manager was able to um, offer some sound advice and as well as welcome some feedback and input. Now, one thing that um, was kind of brought out today that I also had to deal with today with um, some passengers that were reasonable uh, and everything. And now, um, there, uh, like I said in the PSA that I gave um, or, um, earlier today on YouTube, is the fact that um, there's some that don't at, consider um, minors as a plus one. When in actuality, it's much better to do so because sit in, sit in the, uh, um, sitting in the um, adult's lap would be kind of dangerous, especially just in case something happens while they are on the road. So, you know, it's best to be able to, um, to have um, a booster seat there. And you know, you know um, one passenger t told me I can't, I can't hold my, I can't um, have. I can't have um, my daughter in one hand and a booster seat in another because it could be heavy or burdensome after a while and everything. And she brought out an excellent point. So um, one thing that was suggested is what if going forward via Jersey City could have, um, along with the newer wheelchair, the newer wheelchair ramps of course have the um, step up option and everything where um, instead of the side platforms like right here with... Um, H65 R&B hip hop. One thing that is um, going to um, um, one thing that the newer wheelchair vans has is a step up platform, which makes it admittedly easier to be able to step into the vehicle, and admittedly it does minimize the potential of just scratching along the side and everything, because we want to make sure the vehicle is as good as possible in the long run. So, uh, along with that. Um, one proposal was made was to have all the vehicles be installed with um also have um a portable booster seat in the back for minors or for infants which i am in 100 percent favor of um they said that they're going to look into that it's not confirmed but i would suggest to confirm a bit like for everyone that takes via jersey city in and around around uh, like Share this video. Share this video. Talk about it on social media, especially on my ha handle on Twitter or X, but I still call it Twitter. Um, at DJ underscore underscore projects, or um, you know, you could be able to follow me on ins in on Instagram on my three accounts, and um, same same as Twitter underscore underscore projects, as well as underscore underscore transit and underscore underscore art gallery, where I basically have um, um, wholesome pictures of like different things that are on my mind that are based on some pending projects and everything. But yeah, um, I'm not. I don't have an official petition or whatever or with regards to this but basically it's a suggestion that could go a long way because the last thing we want to have is for an accident to happen and that would result in a serious casualty for a minor of all people for an infant and, and everything like my nephew for instance is um this year um how old is Caden like um, this, this year he should be 12 years old. Yeah, this year he'll be 12 years old and everything. And, um, basically, basically, yes, he's older now than, 
um, what I'm describing. But the thing is, is that I want more kids to be able to go to, to be able to live to his age with no problems whatsoever and everything. And, you know, I'm just, I just want to make sure, like, like, um, one thing, um, that, that I'm doing is that, you know, I'm not, um, I'm I'm not um an advertiser for Via Jersey City but um I do want to say this is that um for everyone that do have that does bring your infant or whatever or has kids or just don't include a plus 1 please include a plus 1 it's an additional expense yes I'll admit it it's another $2 and everything and we need that extra $2 to be able to pay the bills but honestly I I would rather, I would rather er, lose some money than lose your life. I've, and the thing is, there could be just a minor accident that occur that could result in um, someone losing their life just because of the fact that they didn't, they decided not to add the plus one. Trust me, I didn't think of nothing of it and everything, and you know, I dismissed it in the past. But in the end, it's better to add a plus one or to just understand the fact that we got that we have to decline it we have to you know, you'll have to decline it and add the plus one for next time because in the end we want everyone to be as safe as possible and the reality is 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 that when the app says we're trying to find the perfect vehicle for you like i said before in a number of videos they're not perfect another reason why i'm happy v is not endorsing me it, the vehicles are not perfect whatsoever. They do have their issues, but um, one thing that we were encouraged to do, and this is something that I've been doing even prior to yesterday's thing, is I check around my vehicle each morning. And, like, I make sure the turn signals work, and thankfully they work in all the Chryslers. The Benz, on the other hand, like, it's why I don't like driving a Benz anymore, but and also the headlights work make sure the brakes are functional there's a reason why for instance um i call myself driving recklessly in the lot and everything it's to make sure that everything works because the like the last thing i want to do is like have something ha something serious happen to my vehicle while i'm on the road and it's something that i could have avoided it is. So, like, whatever issues going on, you know, I let the let the operations team know, and you know, chances are, chances are, like, you may end up, you may end up, you know, not getting to sign a vehicle that day, and you know, you may get at least a forty dollar compensation, which, yes, it's not a lot, and everything. Like, honestly, like, I rather, I ra I'd rather like fifty bucks over forty, like like 40 that's like enough to pay for a happy meal in the next 10 years but <laughs> i'm sorry like with inflation nowadays that joke is funny but yeah just all together just ways to be able to stay safe now um i did mention on twitter a few days ago about the cancellation or the postponement i should say with congestion pricing in manhattan i'm gonna try to talk about that tomorrow during that vlog now, now, I may be able to do so, I may not be able to do so, but I do want to mention about it and everything because there's a lot of people that are talking about it, saying that, oh, oh, Governor Hochul doesn't care about um, traffic conditions or road conditions or whatever and stuff. Uh, first off, of uh, let's hear the whole thing first before we just come to conclusions. Like... Let's hear everything first before we just automatically come to conclusions. That's something that we unfortunately do as humans. So, you know, that's that. And second, we also got to think about it in the long run. Like, I'll at least mention this. This. Even if even if this program was a success and the MTA was able to get the supposed money that they need, would they uninstall the cameras? Would they uninstall the cameras? And if not, where is the money gonna go to? Is it going to go to the ones that provided the vendors for as long as they stay around? Or are they gonna go somewhere else? Who knows? Because like, like the investment that the MTA is asked for, like, 
like um yeah it's enough that the public will be paying for but who knows how much um other entities will be able to pay the mta for these capital plans these capital programs or whatever and the reality is is that we don't know what's going to go on with regards to congestion pricing and everything Am I, do I believe that it's a good idea to help mitigate traffic congestion to minimize it? Absolutely. But I don't think congestion pricing should be the only solution. Really, the salute, like, like, um, the subways, they're doing pr pretty good and everything, albeit there's a lot of crime that happens now in the subways. But I would also argue the fact that, um, I will also argue the fact that, you know, uh, like, this, the stations could be cleaner, can be safer, without having to deal with some homeless knuckleheads. I'm sorry to say it like that. And, um, and mainly for the buses, on the other hand, like, there's some bus routes that, um, I didn't really think about it until I saw a video on YouTube, um, with regards to how Helsinki operates, and... Basically, like, if you could start a service, like, at, on Staten Island, like, where a um, majority of the bus routes don't take forever, like the S74, aka the longest bus route in New York City, period, um, basically, you could be able to have um, a majority of the bus routes just connect directly to, um, connect directly to the subways, I mean, connect to the Staten Island Railway, or likely some express bus routes and everything. So, so who knows? Just a lot for the MTA to be able to consider in the long run that I believe will be beneficial. But I'm done. I'm going to go home and just relax. See y'all later.